In the field of aerospace, especially in rocket technology, inheriting proven achievements from the past is not only natural, but also encouraged. This inheritance can drive the development of the entire space industry. However, to achieve perfect results, we need to combine learning with creativity. Most engineering projects, be they old or new, inevitably have some weaknesses. If we don't thoroughly study all the key factors, learning can just become copying, a form often referred to as rote learning. So, what are the consequences of blind copying? First, we'll fail to grasp the essence of the issue. In milder cases, this can lead to heading in the wrong direction in a project. More seriously, it can result in unforeseen disasters. And the recent rocket explosion in Europe seems to be one of those cases. As we know, SpaceX, the most successful private company in the past two centuries, has consistently been a bright spot that captures the world's attention. Its products like rockets and spacecrafts have broken many records, exactly what other companies envy. This isn't just within the U.S., but also among competing agencies and organizations across the world. Europe, a region currently lagging in space, is making great efforts to freely launch satellites and humans into space without depending on SpaceX by learning from the successful projects in their company. The newly exploded European rocket named RFA-1 was developed by rocket factory Augsburg, a German rocket startup that's leading many competitors in the European commercial launch market. RFA-1 is said to be quite similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9, utilizing some advantageous elements from Starship. The rockets are made of a stainless steel structure with nine helix engines using kerosene and liquid oxygen on the first stage. All nine engines generate a thrust of over 200,000 pounds or about 900 kilonewtons at maximum power, which is only slightly less than Falcon 9's thrust. One helix engine will power the second stage of the RFA-1 rocket, and the third stage or orbital transfer vehicle will complete the mission of placing the payload into orbit. When fully stacked, the rocket stands 30 meters tall compared to Falcon 9's 70 meters, and has the capability to launch 1.3 tons into polar orbit. RFA is one of several European startups developing small commercial satellite launchers. Although the RFA-1 rocket has similarities to Falcon 9, it is the strongest small launch vehicle in the group, and the RFA is the first company to bring flight hardware to the launch site. However, the story is far from easy. During the first static fire test, the rocket exploded. On the evening of August 19th, RFA reported an anomaly leading to the loss of the stage. The company stated that no one was injured and reported that the launch pad had been saved and protected. This is the same rocket RFA planned to launch on its first test flight. The hot fire test was the one with all nine engines on the first stage of RFA-1. A video of the test showed a fireball flaring up around the base of the rocket as the engines ignited. It's unclear whether all nine engines exploded. A few minutes later, the engines appeared to shut down as the fire grew larger, with a jet of flames spewing out of the side of the rocket. Eventually, the booster fell off the stand and exploded when hitting the ground. We are now working closely with Saxavord Spaceport and the authorities to gather data and info to essentially resolve what happened, RFA said. We'll take our time to analyze and assess this situation. Earlier this month, the CEO of German aerospace company OHB, which owns nearly 65% of rocket factory Augsburg, stated that the full integration of RFA-1 is imminent, followed by a launch attempt in a few weeks. The destruction of the first stage could eliminate any chance of launching the RFA-1 rocket before the end of the year, and depending on the cause of the test failure, it could lead to even longer delays. We develop iteratively with an emphasis on real testing, RFA said. This is part of our philosophy, and we were aware of the higher risks attached to this approach. Our goal is to return to regular operations as soon as possible. These tests are designed to identify faults and issues prior to a full test flight campaign and are all carried out in a highly controlled and regulated environment, said Frank Strang, CEO of Saxavord Spaceport, the first fully licensed vertical launch spaceport in West Europe. It's far too early to know what caused the anomaly, but I'm confident that once RFA gets to the bottom of it, they'll rectify the situation and carry on with their program. Learning from SpaceX is not a bad idea, but hopefully in the end, this learning will result in original projects from European startups, helping them achieve great success rather than harming them. On the other hand, it should also be noted that learning rocket techniques safely, both for people and the surrounding areas, is not easy, and not everyone can do it. Perfect example of this is China. Although the Chinese government always promotes and encourages rocket startups, they seem to disregard the feelings of the public, who are constantly living in a state of fear. This is all due to the recklessness in imitating SpaceX's technology, or more precisely, copying it. Some rockets in China have blown up during launch and even in early stage tests right there on the launch pad. On August 6, with the aim of building a mega constellation similar to SpaceX's Starlink, China launched its first batch of broadband satellites. The rocket deployed the satellites in a polar orbit at an altitude of around 500 miles above Earth's surface. 
However, after deploying the satellites, the rocket's upper stage appears to have broken apart. Space tracking firm Slingshot Aerospace recorded more than 50 fragments of debris within the vicinity of the satellites following their deployment, forming a trail of space junk that poses a major hazard to satellite constellations of the same altitude, the firm wrote. The satellites are the first group in China's planned 14,000 satellite mega constellation, aimed at improving broadband services across the country. This is obviously an ominous start and a potentially bad sign of things to come. If even a fraction of the launches needed to field this Chinese mega constellation generate as much debris as the first launch, the result would be a notable addition to the space debris population in low Earth orbit, Audrey Schaefer, VP of Strategy and Policy at Slingshot Aerospace said. This is not the first time China's Long March 6A rocket has caused trouble in Earth orbit. In 2022, the rocket's upper stage broke apart 50 pieces of space debris, which later expanded into a massive cloud of 350 pieces. The space junk came eerily close to SpaceX's Starlink satellites, but no damage was reported. The rocket's upper stage is supposed to re-enter Earth's atmosphere in one piece and burn up upon re-entry. It's unclear what caused the rocket to break apart in space, but this incident contributes to the growing problem of orbital debris. Not to mention, another Chinese rocket also exploded, but it happened during testing. The first stage of the Qianglong-3 rocket left its launch pad due to a structural failure at the connection between the rocket and the test stand, said the company Beijing Changbing, also known as Space Pioneer. The rocket landed in a hilly area of the Ganji of central China, it said. Video footage from the incident showed the rocket soaring straight in the air before losing power and turning horizontally, falling back down to Earth, then blowing up into flames on nearby hills. An investigation of the unplanned flight found there were no reports of casualties, thankfully, it said. Parts of the rocket stage were scattered within a safe area, but caused a local fire, according to a separate statement from the Ganji Emergency Management Bureau. The fire has since been extinguished and no one was hurt, the Bureau said. The two-stage Qianglong-3 Skydragon-3 is a partly reusable rocket under development by Space Pioneer, one of a small group of private sector rocket makers that have grown rapidly over the last five years. Falling rocket debris in China after launches is not unheard of, but it's very rare for a part of a rocket under development to make an unplanned flight out of its test site and then crash. According to Space Pioneer, the first stage of the Qianglong-3 ignited normally during a hot test, but later detached from the test bench due to structural failure. A rocket can consist of several stages, with the first or lowest stage igniting and propelling the rocket upwards upon its launch. When the fuel is exhausted, the first stage falls off and the second stage ignites, keeping the rocket in propulsion. Space Pioneer says the performance of the Qianglong-3 is comparable to SpaceX's Falcon 9, which is also a two-stage rocket. In 2023, Space Pioneer launched a kerosene oxygen rocket, the Qianglong-3, becoming the first private Chinese firm to send liquid propellant rocket into space. While many companies are focusing on satellite production, pioneering businesses like Space Pioneer are turning their attention to developing reusable liquid fuel rockets, a breakthrough that promises to reduce costs for space missions. There's no denying that SpaceX, a giant in the rapidly evolving space sector, has had a tremendous impact on this. Their vision and success have inspired the entire industry, driving a global space technology race. However, in this context, Chinese rocket companies are at a crossroads. If they continue down the path of imitation without investing in independent research and development, they risk not only falling behind, but also potentially causing severe consequences. Innovation and creativity, rather than mere imitation, are the keys to achieving safe and sustainable progress in this challenging field of space technology. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.